Maven is without a doubt the best Java build tool around and Eclipse. Well, that's my favorite IDE, which is why I've put this tutorial together for you. I want to show you just how easy it is to create a Maven project inside of Eclipse. Now in doing so, there's actually two different approaches you can take. One is to use a Maven archetype and another is to just create a blank Maven project where you, you kind of just roll your own. I'm going to show you both approaches here. And in doing so, I'm going to show you some cool things with the archetype approach. I'm going to show you how to do a Maven install, create a jar file, and even have that jar file installed in your local M2 repository. That may sound intimidating, but actually all just happens by default with a simple click of the button. In the roll your own blank Maven project, I'm going to show you how to add a dependency. And that's sort of what Maven is all about, right? Managing your dependencies. So if you stick around for just a few minutes, this is not going to be a long tutorial. You're going to learn a lot, starting off with how to create that archetype Maven project in Eclipse, which is exactly what we're going to do next. I've got my glasses on, so you know I mean business. I've got Eclipse opened up here. I'm going to click on Help and go to About Eclipse, because there's one thing I want you to check right away. I want to make sure that you're using the Eclipse IDE for enterprise Java and web developers. That is the version that's got all the bells and whistles that we need in order to go through this tutorial. I want you to check out something else. I want you to go to Windows Preferences and just make sure that you do in fact have Java installed. Now, Eclipse will install Java by default, and I'm looking at the JRE, the Joe Rogan experience there, and the Joe Rogan experience says, Java runtime environment says that version 21 of the JDK is installed. That's the latest long-term support release, so I'm happy with that. I'm then gonna look at this Maven option here and look at the installations of Maven. And Eclipse comes with Maven pre-installed. And here it's version 3.9.9. .9. I think that's the, the latest. So I'm not going to play around with that. You can always click add and add your own version of Maven or your own JDK. But this tutorial, I don't know why you would. So let's create a new Maven project. And I told you Maven is number one and it's number one on that list. When you say file new, I'm going to click Maven project, create a new Maven project. I'm not going to check that box. It says create a simple project, but we're going to do that next. So hold on for that. But right now I'm just going to click next. And it brings me to this page where I can do something called an archetype selection. Archetype is like a, a predefined, prepackaged application that's got stuff in it that you might need if you're doing a specific type of application. I notice GraalVM is listed there, Elm, Spring, MVC, Blank, J2EE, Jakarta EE. We don't want to do anything that crazy right now. I'm going to just type in org.apache.maven and I'm just going to look under Maven Central for a simple project. And there we go. Maven Archetype Simple. That's going to be good enough for me. Not Site Simple. That's too complicated. You just want Simple. I'm going to click Next. It's going to ask me to fill out the GAV. GAV stands for, is the letters G-A-V in Group ID, Artifact ID, and Version. The group ID is often your domain name backwards, something like that. So for me, it's com.mcnz.maven. The artifact ID is the name you want to call the project. It also becomes the name of the jar file that you deploy. I'll call this Maven example. And the version can be anything you want, but 0 0.0.1 .0 sounds very defeatist. So I'm going to change that to a full version increment, 1.0. I'm going to tidy up the package name there because I want the package name the same as the group ID. And then when that's done, I'm going to click finish and Maven's going to think about it. I'm going to open up this console window. You do that by double clicking on the tab and you can see it downloads a few things from Maven Central, some things that it needs in order to support this project, support this archetype. And then finally it says, hey, are you sure you want to create this? And when it says yes or no, I type in a big Y, not because I'm wondering why, but because I want to say yes, I want to create this project. Now, if I give a little double click to that tab, 
you notice this new Maven example project has been created. What are we going to do next? We're going to go through that, maybe make a, a couple of edits and even maybe build it and deploy it. And that's what we're going to do next. So let's dig into this new Maven project in Eclipse. Let's go into that SRC, SRC source folder. You can see that we've got a package that maps to the group ID that I specified. There's a file named app.java and here we go. A little hello world in here. Now, hold on a second. I'm just going to change my font size so this looks a little bit bigger. Okay, that should be a little bit easier to deal with now. And as you can see, it's just a, a basic Java class here. If you were to right click on this and say run as a Java application, well, it would run and then it would say hello world in the bottom of the page there in the console. Nothing too crazy here, but this is enough to get you started, kick you off. It's got the, the folder structure that we want in modern applications, the SRC folder, and then also the, the test folder as well. The heart of a Maven project is the POM file, the project object model. I'm going to give a hard double click on that and take a gander at what's inside of it. Ooh, that looks like an intimidating file. You notice it set the Maven compiler at version eight. We might want to boost that to something like Java 17. That's never a bad idea. So I'm going to click control S there by making that change. A couple of other details in here. There's dependencies. One dependency that we have is on JUnit. So we can go in here and write unit tests if we want. I don't think that's the latest version. So you might want to update that as well. And then just some configuration for the Maven plugins that are available. So feel free to dig into that file. If you have other dependencies, you add those dependencies in that file. You can make a, a reference to spring starters. You could make a, a reference to logging libraries and you would add it in there. We're going to do that in just a moment when we create the Maven project from scratch. Now you will notice that there's a Walmart folder over here. Sorry, it's not Walmart, it's target, but there's currently nothing in there. Watch this. I'm going to right click on my project and I'm going to say run as a Maven install. You can see the console going wild. And finally, when it's done, it says build success, but it also makes some reference to some Maven example jar file. And if I go over to this target folder and select refresh, or maybe click on the project and select refresh. You notice that something appears in that target folder there, generated sources, test sources, archivers, but most importantly, that Maven jar file. So when you do the Maven install, it's going to compile your code. It's going to run your tests. It's going to package your application up into a jar file. Why a jar file? Because, well, jar file is the default for Java. Sometimes you can specify war file. But why was it called install? Well, it was called install because it actually takes that Maven example jar file. You notice that the package that I was using, the group ID was com.mcnz.maven. If we end up going into the user's home folder, look under M2 for Maven, dig down into the repository, you'll see under com.mcnz.maven, maven example 1.0, there's the jar file. And so that maven install command installed the jar file after building it in my local M2 repository. So that's why they call that a Maven install. Okay, so that is how you create a Maven project. And that's how you actually even build a Maven project and create a jar file. But that's doing it from an archetype. How do you do it from scratch and maybe even add a dependency? That is what we're going to do next. We just took a look at how to create a Maven project inside of Eclipse using an archetype. Let's take a look at how we would create one without using an archetype. In order to do that, you start off the same way. You say, hey, I want to create a new Maven project, but you click that button right there that says create a simple project and skip the archetype selection. You then click next. 
you got to fill in the gap. So com.mcnz.maven, artifact ID, maven, example, two. And jar files the packaging there. Notice that's the default. There's all sorts of different options here. We'll make it version 1.0. And then from there, I'm just going to click finish. A lot faster, a lot easier to do. I'm going to open up this Maven project here and you can see there's nothing added to it. Like I've got nothing in here at all. Let me take a look at my palm file. I've got nothing in the palm file. In fact, I've got that test folder there, but I don't even have a reference to JUnit, so I couldn't create JUnit tests even if I wanted to. What I'm going to start off by doing is I'm going to create just a new Java class. And I'm going to create, put this new class in the com.mcnz.maven2 package. And I'll call it the app class because that's kind of standard. And I'll click this button to create a public static void main method just so I've got something runnable. And then in here, I'll just do something like system.out.println hello world. And there you go. We've now got a, an application that will run, run as a Java application. It says hello world. I can come over here and do that run as Maven install, and it's going to create that Walmart folder for me and put that built jar file in there. I'm going to come over here and click right click and say refresh as soon as that console window stops barking at me. And so I click refresh over here, open up this target folder, and there is that jar file created for us. So you can see that Maven is actually doing some builds and some packaging and some deployment as well. I wonder if I come over here to 1.0, there's Maven example two, and there you can see that Maven example two jar file installed in my M2 repository. Now, one of the cool things about Maven is that it makes it possible for you to bring in other projects. So I'm over at the Maven repository right here, and I'm a big fan of Apache Commons Lang. I'm going to click on the latest version 3.17, and it says, you know, if you add that dependency to your Maven project, well, you know, you're going to be able to use all of the code from that library. So I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come back to my project, I'm going to come back to my palm. And I have to do one addition here. I have to say I'm going to add some dependencies. So I type in dependencies, wait for some auto suggestions to come up, dependencies. Enter, 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 enter. Now control V to paste that in, control shift F to format so it all looks handsome. And now we've got a nice handsome POM file with a dependency on comms.lang, which is going to give us access to some very, very cool methods. How cool? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to paste in a few lines of code here from Apache Utils. And look at that. It says, oh, do you, do you see that red X there? If you see that red X, you need to get your eyes checked because that is not a red X. That is a white X on a red background. But it says string utils cannot be resolved. Why? I thought I did the dependency. I just have to do the control shift O, the right click and say source, organize imports. And boom, all of a sudden, I'm able to bring that in. It was there all along. You can see, you know, we want to capitalize hello world system.out.println, the result there. And then is empty, should be true if that's empty. We've got A, B, C, one, two, three, baby, you and me, Michael Jackson song. And we want to reverse it with string utils. I'm going to press control S. I'm going to right click. I'm going to run as a Java application and boom, hello world. Uh, we got to see the hello world printed out that second time. Okay, it was the capitalization of the first letter. ABC123 is reversed to 321CBA. This all looks like it's working really, really well. And so there you go. That's how you actually add a dependency to your code. And then 
next time you go into your code, you can just reference classes in that dependency, in that dependent project, import them in and use them as normal. And there you go. That's how easy it is to create a Maven project inside of Eclipse.